after another three kicks, game-winning field goals as time expired before that. Just 10 games in NFL postseason history have ended that way in regulation. The fourth and final divisional game of the night. Patrick Mahomes did the impossible, bringing his team to field goal range with just 13 seconds left in the game. Field goal, of course, sealed the deal, and the Chiefs went on to win in overtime. But the love for the kickers is not always as sweet as we saw this weekend. Fans demanding perfection and giving very little grace, especially when the stakes are high. Boy, was it fun to watch. No one knows the pressure and the reward more than former pro bowler Mike Hollis, and he is our guest live tonight. Mike, great to see you. Thanks for taking some time. Thank you so much. Glad to be on. I just, I mean, like, I don't know which game was better yesterday. I mean, I think the final one probably in my book. I mean, just I kept yelling at the TV screen, and I didn't even have any skin in the game. Uh, your reaction to what you witnessed over the weekend? I, I witnessed uh, four of the most absolute wonderful games of, of, of my football watching career. Um, I, I was just astonished. I'm jumping off the couch uh, last night when the, uh, the Chiefs won that game. That was incredible. And uh, I, I've never seen so much excitement in four games in a row in, in one weekend. It's, it was just unbelievable. It and was, how about the special teams? Oh, my gosh. It was so, so, so fun. Now, I have heard it said that if you don't have the stomach, the leg doesn't matter. So let's talk about kicking for a second. And it's fair to say that most kickers have had their moment of infamy. How would you describe the mindset of a kicker in games like these? You know, the, the, the trick is to trick your mind into thinking that every kick is the same. Okay, so the first kick of the game is, is just as important as the last kick in the game. There's really nothing different. In, in the kicker's uh, mindset, in the operation, everything that's happening in that game-winning field goal is no different than any other kick in the game. So why would you add more importance to it? Obviously, the, the, the score changes and you win the game. That's, that's, what's, that's what's wrong with that kind of picture. Um, but in reality, if you can just dumb it down and simplify the process and just act like it's the first kick of the game and, and you know no worries it's not that big of a deal just kick the ball and hope it goes through and make it and you know obviously the, the team wins when you score those last points but uh, you got to trick your mind a little bit as a kicker. Mm -hmm. Well and for you I mean repetition right you're doing it over and over again it's easier to do but for a rookie like Evan McPherson uh, quite an event last night for him I mean only the kicker taken uh, 20 only kicker taken in the 2021 draft scored 13 of the Bengals 19 points he hit the 52 yard field goal to win the game. Did it surprise you that a rookie could pull that off with that type of pressure? Uh, you know, no, not really. Um, I watched Evan play here uh, in, in Gainesville, played for the University of Florida, just up the up the road here from Jacksonville. And uh, I tell you, he's got a he's got a the, the mind of steel. I mean, he reminds me of Adam Vinatieri in a way where he just it, nothing phases him. And I was hearing him talk about you know pr during the game, of course, what they were talking about prior to his kick, and he was just kind of like, yeah, well, let's get ready for another game, let's go, guys, you know. So again, uh, you know, you got to be confident in yourself if you're going to talk like that, of course. But uh, you know, he has a, a definite a great mindset. He's, he's, a, he's a wonderful kicker. Yeah, it was fun to watch, and it'll be fun to see what he does next. All right, so the NFL's overtime rules, as you know, Mike, have got a lot of people talking today. What are your thoughts right now, and, and are the rules fair? Because I sat down yesterday, looked at my husband, I go, now remind me what's going to happen right now. He's like, first team to score wins. I'm like, what? Well, I believe it's the first game team that scores a touchdown win. Correct, um, correct. I, yeah. So, but but I still don't think that's fair because the Chiefs get the ball, they march down a score. I mean, the, the game. I, I with the NFL and the in the in the they wanted to get you know games over and and all that. It's it's kind of about the money in a sense. I get that part of it as a business, but as as a sport and as fans watching the game, I, I do think it's a little unfair when it comes down to that that uh, that that game winning. You know, well, it could have been a kick, whatever. But it, it just a, the last second sort of opportunity to win the game based on a coin toss. So I, I think it should change. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I do agree. I like the college. I, I like how college does it. It gives both teams kind of a fair, fair chance of, of winning the game. Yep, more fun for fans, too. The other thing a lot of people are talking about right now, Tom Brady. And if, if we witnessed his last game over the weekend, what do you think? I don't think it's his last game. That guy is addicted to winning. Um, what has he got, seven Super Bowl rings? I'm sure, I'm sure he's hoping Who's for counting? eight. <laughs> yeah, I, I lost count after five. I got yeah, one me hand. too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> so you, you think we'll, we'll see him play again? Uh, I sure hope so. So I want to talk really quick about coaching and, and your academy. I know that you teach the most effective and efficient way of kicking. Um, it really comes down to the science of it. So for, for the young guys coming up through the game right now, what are you telling them uh, is the key to success? 
You know, um, it, it, I, I, I played in the NFL for nine years as a very um, average athlete, um, very small for, for the NFL player statute. Um, um, I was 5'7", 180 pounds. My athletic ability and my size and my strength was, was not what made me kick in the NFL for so long and do so well, as well as I did. It was the technique. And I'm telling these young guys, listen, if you can find that the foundation, the fundamentals that we're teaching and then rely on the mechanics to do the work for you, it takes a lot of pressure off yourself. If you're just athletically guiding and steering the ball, and, and, and I tell kids literally, if you will only be as good as your athletic ability if you want to athletically kick a ball. If you want to get more detailed in mechanics and add your athletic ability to that, that's very good for both, obviously, the, the physical mindset of, as far as, you know, kicking the ball far and high and straight, but also the mental side of it, too, because I got to a point in my career where I didn't care where the ball went. Yeah, I said that. I didn't care where the ball went. I was so focused on my technique, and I knew and I trusted that that technique would do the work for me, and it did. And that's exactly what I tell these kids. I said, listen, just, just trust your form. Trust the process. You've kicked a million balls throughout your career, throughout your life, whatever it might be. Don't do anything different on game day. It doesn't mean it. everything is the same. The operation is the same. You, you're doing the same thing you do on game days you did in the five weeks of practice prior to the game. So just trust that process. That's right. It's sort of like the mentality of a golf swing, right? The biggest, strongest guy doesn't necessarily hit the ball the furthest. Um, so what was, what's your, your, your best moment in your mind from, from your career? I mean, was it 96 hitting the uprights? I mean, what was, what's the moment that stands out for you? Well, it was 96, uh, playing uh, against my Bills, of course. I say my Bills because I was a Jaguar for, for many years, seven years, and then I played for the Bills for one year. But um, in 96 was our second year of our franchise in, in Jacksonville, and uh, we weren't expected to do much, of course, and we made it in the playoffs, of course, and then go to Buffalo where it's very, very tough to play. They've gone to a bunch of Super Bowls prior to that, and and uh, we were definitely an underdog, and you know, hitting that upright on, the, on that that. I guess game winning kick. It was about a minute and 20 something left in the game, but uh, we, we won the game by those points, of course. And then fast forward to the next weekend, that was even better because we were not supposed to win at all. You know, we played the, uh, the Denver Broncos and uh, we were clearly the underdogs. They were already selling Super Bowl bound shirts. You know, at the stadium, from what I've been told. Ooh, that's tough. Um, yeah, we, we knock them off. So it was it was incredible. And then the way home, on the, on the travel on the way home, the airplane ride home, uh, flying over the stadium and then landing and then getting into the stadium and talking to the fans. It was, it was incredible. I get, I get goosebumps talking about it yep. every time. Pretty incredible. Lots of wonderful moments to celebrate. Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time, Mike Hollis. Uh, excited to see what, uh, what these teams do next weekend. And uh, the best to you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.